I watched this movie on July 4th, and that was probably a mistake. Then you may be a hero. Me, let's see. You fire! Yes! Very good! Hi, welcome to the Silver Spleen. My name is Oscar Acosta, and this is my review of American Dreams in China. American Dreams in China is directed by Peter Chan, who made 1996's Comrades Almost a Love Story and 2007's Warlords. The story of three young men who start an English school in Beijing, American Dreams in China is based loosely on real people and real events. Feng Xiaoming, Deng Chao, and Tong Da Wei play three young men in the newly opening China of the mid to late 1980s. They all harbor a dream of going to America to study and find success, but they don't live the American dream. They end up living the China dream, you know, three mistresses, two air filters, and a Lamborghini. I joke, of course, their plans don't work out as planned. Oh! They end up starting an English school and become rich, successful, and venomously acrimonious. How good's your English? Now that's obviously a very bare-bones synopsis, but the story's not what I want to focus on in this review. Speaking of focus, the age difference between the three main actors is very noticeable, something I'm sure that Huang Xiaoming brought up with his plastic surgeon. And as long as we're bringing up anomalies, I have to say it might have helped if the three actors portraying English teachers could speak intelligible English. In some cases, they were very obviously overdubbed. In almost all the other cases, they were dubbed. But you can't overdub acting. There's no post-production equivalent to auto-tune. Damn it. Huang Xiaoming's character has an emotional breakdown, and it's so poorly presented in a visual sense that I couldn't tell if there was an earthquake going on in the story or there was a technical malfunction of the camera. I... And that's sad because the cinematography for American Dreams in China was apparently done by Christopher Doyle. But it's not just the, the visuals. The story had me wondering, too. Apparently, the way to a girl's heart is through sexual assault. This same poor woman jumps in the water and, and catches, that's what the subtitle said, pneumonia in weather where people are sweaty. A guy kisses her and he gets tuberculosis. Stop letting Barbara Wong do medical research for your scripts. How do you fail the Chinese college entrance exam twice and then get into the best university in China with English that bad? This movie is obviously made for China and nowhere is that more apparent than in its willful avoidance of a certain historical event. But you've heard of a leap year, right? In the China of American Dreams in China, 1989 is a great leap forward year. Instead of adding February 29th, it just detracts June 4th. Because if you're making a movie about Chinese college students who want to go abroad to places like America in the late 1980s, there's no need to even mention June 4th. It has no relevance, especially if you want the film to be able to play in China. Right, Sarft? Even if we leave that aside. Some of the film's dialogue and situations and the entire climactic monologue are as problematic as they are didactic. Americans will never understand what it's like to kneel and crawl the way Chinese heroes do. You know, six months later and I still can't work that one out. Someday when we are no longer English teachers, but representatives of the largest education service corporation in the world, you may finally show us the respect we deserve. Or not, you two how jackass. Money don't buy class. China has changed. Unfortunately, you are stuck in the past. China has already become the largest English language education market, yet you are still stuck with whether they cheat on exams. Yes, Americans have the temerity to not want to accept people who cheat on entrance exams into American universities. We're terrible people. The nerve of Americans when we want a biology major to be a research assistant in a biology lab as opposed to someone who's not a biology major. How dare we? If you're a busboy in an American restaurant and the waitresses aren't giving you the percentage of tips they're supposed to, open your mouth and say, hey, give me my money. Or is that beneath you? Waitresses are supposed to tip out busboys and sometimes they don't do it. That has happened before, even with busboys who aren't Chinese. For some people who come to America, being randomly selected by customs to have your bag searched is a grievous insult. I can only guess since, you know, it never happens to anybody but Chinese people. And then it's um, obviously part of some kind of systematic humiliation. I mean, watch the movie. Chinese people are apparently 
the only ones who have to deal with loud, opinionated, profane taxi drivers in New York City. I mean, can you believe it? I was shocked. These things apparently constitute failure to show basic courtesy. The rest of us think of it as, you know, life in America. What the fuck do we know? We're just from there. But we're not Chinese, which apparently makes us rather obviously flawed, stupid, and irrelevant. As Wang Xiaoming gloatingly points out in the jingoistic monologue at the film's climax, what's the big deal about cheating? Because these Chinese students won't stay in the United States, so your opinion is groundless. So is your logic, f knuckle. How is it irrelevant that an American company is being robbed and cheated by a Chinese company? What part of unauthorized copying did you find so irrelevant? My favorite part of this 2013 film is when one of the characters drunkenly sings a karaoke rendition of a Beyond song that turned out to be the anthem of the Umbrella Movement in Hong Kong. My second favorite was when one of the characters forgets about his wife at their wedding reception and ends up in some kind of drunken bromantic three-way with the other two dudes. Now, obviously, I didn't like this movie and I felt kind of insulted by it. Not so much by anything they said, but just because what they said was so dumb. Even so, I'd recommend that you watch it because you know what? Maybe the subtitles weren't perfect. I mean, God knows the English spoken in the movie wasn't. Maybe I got it all wrong. Maybe Peter Chan was subtly trying to parody China today. I don't think so, but watch the movie and form your own opinion. I'd say that it would be wrong to copy this movie, but considering this is a movie about people illegally copying things, don't be irrelevant. If you enjoyed my review, please tell me. If you didn't, tell me. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Speaking of focus, the age difference between... What the fuck is that noise?